So welcome back to boot camp. I'm so, I'm so glad all of you guys are here. But let me start before anything else by saying thanks. thanks. Thanks to all of you guys for making this really a meaningful experience. And, and I've, I've heard that, that uh, there's been a lot of great interaction going on. You guys are going way out of your way to make this meaningful, uh, despite the fact that we're all the, the sitting in our pajamas at home. And it's, uh, and so this, I am looking forward to all of us getting together in person at some point in the future to continue all of the great discussions that are going on here. But thank you for all the extra effort you're putting in. Keep it up. Um, so uh, actually, before I say anything, before I say even that, I'm supposed to disclose potential conflicts of interest, especially potential foreign influence on my thoughts and what you are hearing. So be, be aware of that. But also, I do have to point out that I do have uh, companies that are associated with, with imaging of extracellular matrix and also with uh, manipulating extracellular matrix. And these are potential conflicts of interest that so don't believe a word I say. But um, anyway, this is what we are here to talk about. We are here to talk about animal extracellular matrix. And uh, you, you guys have seen this before. I spent a lot of time in China. This is, this is very popular in China. I've never tried this myself. But uh, I'm a vegetarian, uh, but, so, but I'm sure you guys know all about this. Let's start off by identifying some extracellular matrix. Who can, and, and, I, and I actually prefer for this to be a little interactive. Would anybody be willing to identify some extracellular matrix on this image? Anybody know what this is? Anybody have this before? I, I, I'd hate to have to call on someone. I see some plants on uh... the wall. Very good. That's piece number one. Plant cell wall. The big question is, you know, it, is this really extracellular matrix? It, it is to a degree, but something we're going to talk about is that plants and animals, you know, every plant and every animal has a single common unicellular ancestor. It makes Congress it makes so much sense. Uh, it, uh, it, uh, in fact, each one of those guys defended, descended from the same thing that a piece of grass is. Uh, but but uh, so, so there are going to be some parts of what goes on outside of the cell in a plant that are very similar to what goes on inside uh, an, an animal tissue. Where else do you see some extracellular matrix here? I think the wider pieces are tendon. Absolutely, Chris. Thank you. Uh, uh, and so so over here, th that's there's a uh, there's there's tendon here. This is this is a leg of beef and somebody just chopped off the ends like you like you carnivores do and it went all the way down to the bone sliced it up and fried it all and so it's a really complicated structure we're going to go into it in a moment but the uh, the, the idea is that most extracellular matrix has some kind of integrated hierarchical structure you know all the way down from molecules that are twisted a certain way then packed in a certain way then those packings are packed in a certain way and there's even extracellular matrix around the dominant fibers. So, so, so when you're eating uh, this delicious dish at the white end, it's mostly, uh, it, it's mostly collagen, but, but between the collagen are other molecules that hold them together and organize the, those fibers. And we'll talk about those. What else do you see in extracellular matrix? It's not the plate or the table. The, the, uh, so, so the meat, the, the meat here at the end as well, it also has extracellular matrix in it. There's much less. So, so most of your muscles, you think of them as, as, as a bunch of muscle cells contracting together. They're held together and organized by extracellular matrix. And we'll, we'll talk about this uh, in, in a moment. Um, but the, but the, uh, the, the, so we'll talk about that big picture, but uh, we won't get into the details, but for example, in muscle, there are, there, are, there are proteoglycans, such as dystroglycans, that, uh, that are crucial to making sure all the fibers, all the cells inside the muscle are lined up and contracting together. And so when, there's a, 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 when there are errors in dystrophan and uh, mutations in dystrophan, you get horrible, uh, you get horrible diseases like dystrophy. So, and then, so, so throughout so the, the extracellular matrix, even in muscles, is absolutely vital. All right, but we're, we're not ready to introduce you to uh, 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 extracellular matrix yes, yet. For those of you who are eating, stop doing so now. Um, okay, so who can see some extracellular matrix here? And for those of you who aren't as old as Rom, this is about as old as the, as the stars. This is Gerald Ford, who was a, a football star from the University of Michigan, 
and was, elect, and was president for a couple of years after Richard Nixon decided not to go through with it. So who, who could tell me where, who could, who could identify some extracellular matrix here? It's no fair making Chris do it all the time. Uh, all right, so, so, you know, I understand if you're feeling shy in front of these horrifying photographs, but, um, but, so, 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 but the idea is that when you, when you look at a person, you are admiring their extracellular matrix. So uh, everything on the outside of our bodies is extracellular matrix from, from the teeth down, down from the teeth that uh, teeth down to the uh, into the skin to the hair it's all stuff that cells produce on their outsides and it's it's all it's uh, and it's uh, and it's so it's, it's the it's the stuff it's the stuff that actually makes tissues work so and even Gerald Ford's uh, 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 swimming suit here uh, that, that's extracellular matrix. He was wearing a cotton swimming suit back then, which is extracellular matrix of plant cells. Anyway, so 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 that's that's the big that's the big big picture. So so extracellular matrix. So this is the stuff inside animal tissues and or, and organs. And some people call cell walls and plant tissues extracellular matrix as well. So it's all the stuff on the outside. And as as we'll get to in a moment, it's kind of hard to to really define what the outside is. But, uh, but, but the earth, uh, when you get close to a cell, but it has water, it has these long macromolecules. So, so they're mostly proteins and then polysaccharides. Uh, and, then, and then there's also mineral in certain tissues as well. And so uh, like the inside of a cell, it's a very crowded environment. And these are a couple of pictures that my colleague Becky Wells, many of these slides are adapted from her stuff. Uh, for, she gives a great talk on this. I'm sorry you're stuck with me. Uh, but. Uh, but it's a very crowded environment, very dense, and the, and the way that things interact and line up in these environments is very, so that's really crucial. Uh, and, and then, and it's uh, it, there, and uh, you know, although the inside, we'll talk about this again in a moment. Although the insides of cells are really similar between plants and animals, the further you get away from the cell, uh, the, the lipid membrane, the more different they are because the, because multicellularity yeah, these, uh, has evolved multiple times. Uh, and and our, our single common ancestor between plants and animals uh, did, was a unicellular organism, as far as we know. Anyway, so he, here's what's uh, he, he, here are the types of molecules we're interested in in the extracellular matrix. All right, so this this is uh, th this is a, a, an archetypal tissue that doesn't really exist, but there, but there's a uh, so so the, there'd be but for for a uh, for a for a tissue that has on its outer layer a, uh, a layer of cells in these in these uh, cartoons, there there are multiple classes of extracellular proteins that show up. So something that's often left off in, in pictures, as is left off in this picture, is uh, is one of these uh, is a, it's called glycocalyx. It's proteoglycans, it's glycosaminoglycans that are long charged molecules uh, that the, the hairy bits on the outside. Then you know, beneath a layer of cells, there's a basement membrane. That's a second major class of extracellular matrix. These are things that, that are, these are, these are protein structures with some polysaccharides that are, that are designed, if you will, to, uh, to enable cells to stick to them and, and enable proper transport. And then, and then there's, and then beneath that, there are, there are tissues like tendon uh, that, that have an interstitial matrix and muscles have, have such a, a matrix as well. And even even brain parenchyma has such a, a, a as this. So the uh, so this interstitial matrix has, has a whole bunch of cell types uh, that are, that struggle to make their way around. Macrophages or macrophages, depending on where you're from, uh, will will, um, will 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 go through great contortions to make it through these. The, these 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 have to contain things such as the vasculature, the capillaries. They can they contain uh, cell, cells that. To enable uh, the certain function of other cells, they contain, uh, they, they, and then they're sort of like fiberglass in a way, in that they, they contain uh, they, they contain things like uh, proteoglycans, like a protein is hydrogen, and inside as glue, and, and then they, they link together elastic fibers and things like collagen fibers. So, so if this were fiberglass, the la these, these elastic fibers that we'll talk about, and the collagen would be would be the bits of glass fiber, and then 
the hyaluronin proteoglycans and glycoproteins would be the glue that holds it together. And all these other things need to work within that environment. All right, and so, and, and so key difference between, difference between plants and animals is that, oh, I'm sorry, I'm using a new version of, of PowerPoint. This is going way too fast. I'm not gonna figure out, I'm not gonna figure out how to uh, slow it down here. This is, uh, this is actually supposed to take a day, not a second, but I was hoping it would take about 10 seconds. Um, but the, the idea is you put a fiberglass cell that's responsible for maintaining the extracellular matrix into a bunch of collagen. It, it, it's extremely dynamic and it, it's, uh, it, it will move and it will, it, it will, uh, it will uh, shake fibers around and will get based on the signals it gets from the extracellular matrix. This is an extreme case because this is a fiber, that, this is a cell that just dropped into a bunch of, of collagen. And that's maybe reminiscent of a wound healing or developmental scenario, but, um, but, but it's, it's clear from this that the cell the cells constantly feel their extracellular matrix and then try to work their way around it. Uh, all right. Anyway, so so the uh, the the, the I, I want to emphasize uh, one one more big picture point before going forward into some details. So so big picture. Um, you know, Plant and animal cells. These are these are cartoons of them that don't really look like this. Um, and you know, you see on the inside, plant cells. They have and animal cells have the same stuff. This is supposed to be an animal cartoon on the left, a plant cartoon on the right. Uh, the the plant cells were, were more more prodigious hunters, and so they they, they swallowed, uh, but, but eventually enable the, the cells that eventually enable photosynthesis. Both the, both our common ancestor had already swallowed. The ancestor of mitochondria, so lots of the same things in both cells, and and um, the, by the outside though, the, the 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 plant cells extracellular matrix as we just learned about from two real experts on the subject, and uh, has has a fairly rigid structure, and, uh, and so that plants can't do what collagen what, what fibroblasts do in collagen and reach out over very long distances to, to contact their neighbors. But something that is common between both of them. Is, is what's missing at the outside of this animal cell picture, which is the glycocalyx, and 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 it's uh, and it's part ECM, part part uh, part, part uh, cell membrane protein, and the, this, this glycocalyx reaches out a long distance, extremely uh, uh, charged molecules, and and you know, the, the work of our late colleague from CME, Barbara Picard, showed that if you if, showed that there are there are analogs to a glycocalyx. In plant cells as well. So at the, at the right, right by the the uh, right, right by the plant cell uh, boundary, there there are uh, between the plant cell membrane and the cell wall, there there are there is the equivalent of a glycocalyx. This is something that's, that's heavily conserved and is therefore involved in lots of key cell functions. All right. Anyway, so so uh, so wrapping this up with some key points. The uh, so, 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 key, key points to take away: the the the, uh, the various extracellular matrix uh, systems inside a plant. They are uh, they're they're very much uh, heterogeneous. So you saw lots of lots of different uh, components of them. Two big components are collagen in many tissues. Uh, so so tendons lots of has lots of collagen. Brain has very little collagen. And then there's uh, and then there's hyaluronic acid and, and these and these uh, these long charged molecules as well and and uh, the cartilage has a relatively large uh, proportion of these as we'll discuss this really dictates how cartilage is able to uh, withstand compression and and uh, and other tissues have a very a very a small uh, volume fraction of these so these these are so uh, something we're going to emphasize is that these are these are very dynamic. They, uh, uh, they, 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 they change with disease and they, and they change with in response to uh, mechanical stimulus. Uh, the, the extracellular matrix is typically in, in, all, in all but muscle what determines the, uh, the, the mechanical properties of a tissue. So, so, so brain parenchyma to a small degree, muscle to a large degree, you're, you're stretching cells. Everything else in your body um, uh, when when you're when you're uh, when you're stretching it, uh, you're 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 feeling the mechanical properties of the extracellular matrix. So therefore, from the perspective of mechanobiology, it's really important because the uh, because this is what determines 
what a cell feels. And so it determines what a cell feels, what, what, uh, what, what, is, what reaches a cell, what a cell is able to hold on to, uh, and, and then whether or not a cell can, uh, can become uh, uh, metastatic and kill you. All right, and so, uh, yeah, and so, so we already made that point. So this, this is a, a beautiful figure that's probably illegible on your screen, unfortunately. It's, uh, I see that it somehow got pixelated. But uh, in, to different, different uh, extracellular matrix throughout your body has different quantities of, of, of different extracellular matrix proteins. So there, there are 28 colleges that we know about, and the, uh, and the, the uh, and, uh, and as some tissues have, have, have almost no collagens at all. Uh, and so, so the and so so bone bone has uh, bone has only a single type of collagen in it. This is, this is collagen one uh, A. And then the uh, and then uh, but then the the, the really uh, the, the, the the tissues that you really don't want to go into in great detail, like your colon and your rectum. They have all kinds of causes. You think that so 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 they're they're really a mess to pull apart for many reasons. All right. So so so, this, so uh, we'll you'll ha have these slides. It's a fun chart to look through to look at the diversity of different tissues and diversity of different causes that show up. All right. And so as we go through, uh, your themes that are going to come up, and uh, so so, you know, so key differences between the different tissues on the previous slide are number one, how water flows through them. So different types of, of proteins, different types of extracellular matrix proteins allow different, uh, uh, different degrees of water transport. You know, these are really crowded environments. And there's some beautiful pictures. These are again taken from Becky Wells, uh, uh, she, she grabbed from the literature, to showing just how dense certain, uh, uh, certain molecules are. The cornea is extremely dense collagen, so on the outside of your eyes, and, and uh, it's acellular. Um, uh, so, 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 so dense that you can't even fit a cell in there. Uh, the, but even there, there are these hierarchical, hierarchical aggregates, and then you know, and, and so uh, the, these, these determine how, a cell, how cells uh, feel. Uh, and then we'll talk a little bit about cell matrix interaction. So how, so the details of matrix determine how a cell can interact with it, and they also de determine how a cell, what a cell feels. All right. So anyway. There, are, there are the three classes of proteins we've already uh, already mentioned out of the matrisome. There, there are the, the load-bearing uh, proteins. Those are going to be collagen and elastin predominantly. Then there are the proteoglycans, which is the, the stuff that glues the, the the glass fibers together and the fiberglass that makes up our body. And then there are adhesive glycoproteins. These are like fibronectin and laminin, and these and and, uh, and the muscle dystrophin, uh, the dystroglycan. So the, these uh, these are essential to uh, making sure that that the proteins stack up the right way. Even if they don't take load, they, throughout development, if they're not there, you end up with a messy non-functional tissue. Looking at length scales, uh, so so uh, so uh, go, going over the entire range of length scales relative to a cell. So as our, as our CMB Anders Carlson will always emphasize. Uh, you could never say that something's small until, unless you know what you're comparing it to. And for us, we're, we're comparing it to, uh, we're comparing proteins uh, size to cell sizes. And so, so the, the volume of a cell is, is going to be, uh, is, is the volume of the cell is going to be as on the order of cubic microns. So, so a, thousand, a thousand cubic microns is a, is a typical size for a cell. Uh, and, so, and, and, and so we compare that then to the size of, 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 uh, of many of these extracellular matrix proteins. So there, there are some long proteins, relatively long proteins are hundreds of nanometers. Uh, they, the individual uh, fibrils of collagen are, are, are uh, on the order of hundreds of nanometers long, although you'll see spacing, uh, certain spacing is smaller than that in, the, in these structures. So for, for, the individual pro for the individual molecules, all of these are small, Compared to a, um, uh, the, 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 all these are small compared to any cell. But then these these aggregate together, as as we'll discuss, and the, the way they aggregate together can enable them to, to be uh, large compared to, uh, to to most cells. All right. 
So protein number one, the first one we'll talk about is collagen. So this is the most abundant uh, uh, fibrous protein in the extracellular matrix. Um, it, it's, uh, it, when, when, you, when you get that dish I showed on slide one in a Chinese restaurant, there seems to be more collagen than any other protein on that dish. Uh, 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 there are 28 of them that we know of. They have a certain structure. So they form this triple helix structure. And this, this, uh, the, these, uh, they, they ha these triple helix uh, take, take, uh, take advantage of these, of these prolines. These prolines are, are relatively small and they enable a very tight packing in this triple helix. Uh, and, and, then, and so then these triple helices, as we'll discuss, will, will form other, uh, other structures based on what's around them. That's called post-translational modification. And there, and so and there, there are, uh, and they, they do complete different things depending on the non-collagenous proteins uh, and domains that they can recruit. So here's some, uh, here's some, uh, some different families of them. We'll go into this. this uh, the, the collagen fibrils, these are, these are the most common ones that, these are great structural elements. But you see throughout the body, especially in basement membrane, uh, we see other domains that enable there to be, instead of this closely packed structure, enable the, this kind of mesh work. And this mesh work then it's, it's flexible, it can be stretchable, it's, uh, it's, it's, it, can, it can break apart and heal really easily. Because all you can do to break apart is, is sever a couple of, of these links between uh, fibrils, and then you can reheal them or, or, or grow. And there, there, are, there are also protein, there, there are also various versions of, of, uh, of, of extracellular matrix proteins that just kind of serve as glues and anchors. Now, the, the way this comes about, there, there's, a, uh, there, there's, a, a, there's a beautiful self-assembly process that, that involves folding. The, these, the triple helices form, but then once these triple helices are form, they, they, they end up, they, they, they self-assemble based on covalent cross-linking. And, and we'll, we'll go into how that happens uh, more. There, there are two major classes of cross-linking proteins. And, the, and there's, there's this, and then, and then they, they, they show up in a certain way. I'll show you a three-dimensional movie of this from one of our old papers in a moment. Um, the the, uh, the length scale go, go, go down from the size of a cell, uh, the size of a cell down to the size of amino acids. This is from a paper by our colleague Marcus Bueller. All right, and so this is, this is a movie that I couldn't get to work, and so I'm going to try only once uh, to see if I can use uh, this software here. And we're going, to, we're going to skip through parts of it. All right, this was really early in the days of movies, uh, so, so uh, this one was hard to make a movie. So, so, so if we just take each one of these triple helix molecules to be a rod, it's a slightly bent rod, they have a certain stacking together, and this, this stacking is for those of you who have a physics background. This would be the point group of the uh, of the uh, of the, the the repeating group of the Bravais lattice. All right, so now we shrunk it down by a factor of thirty, so you can see what happens. Uh, and these are, these are actually twisted slightly as well because the Bravais lattice has, has a slight torsion to it. But then the, the way it stacks together, and uh, th this I think we I, I think we have one more revolution here. It's just too much, so we're going to zip through a bit. So they, they, these stack together in a special way. So there's covalent cross-linking here uh, that, that stacks these together. And, and, then, and then if you, uh, so then, then the, these pieces form uh, what's called a microfibril. And if you look at the microfibrils, so, so if you look at the microfibrils from the side, the way these stack up in 3D, it's very, it, it's, uh, it's very irregular, but now we've taken a square array of these. You look from the side and you get these, these spacing patterns. So every, every 67 nanometers, every other group of these fibrils uh, overlaps. And then th those, are, those are crucial for both because then these fibrils, the, these, uh, there, there are five different ways you could, that, that you can look through this arrangement of fibrils and, and mineral sticks in uh, in the overlap regions in each one of these. And then of course, mi mineral also shows up on the outside but apparently the picture's missing. All right, anyway, so that, that, that's, how, that's how calls and stacks together. Um, and and we see- Oh, uh, excuse me, guy. Yes. Uh, this is Shandri from WashU. Uh, just now you show us the video. I think that is uh, a little similar with the uh, structure of the bone, right? Oh, I they, they, read a, yes, yeah. yes, please go on. Please, please, please share your thoughts on that. Yeah, I, I read some paper uh, written by Hua Jian 
he showed us the structure of the bone. It's uh, almost a self-similar structure. And uh, he said that uh, it consists of the mineral and the protein. So the protein can stand for the shear stress and the mineral can stand for the uh, stretch stress. So he proposed the uh, stretch shear model. And I think that uh, maybe for the tendon, it's a little similar with the bone, right? It is. Oh, that, was a, that was a great point, and it's uh, something that, that I should have emphasized. I'm really glad you brought it up. First, those, those old models, those are, those are 2D models. Uh, so so this, is, this is Hua Zhen Gao's work that, uh, that Shan Jun is talking about. Hua Zhen Gao is a, a big figure in the field who came from, uh, who's, uh, who's uh, Shan Jun's academic brother. He came from Xi'an Jiao Tong University, where I, where I teach in China as well. But yeah, it, it's, this, it's this really cool. The, uh, the, the, uh, in fact, let me show you a picture here. Let me try to uh, get this up. Yeah, let me show you a picture. So, so, the, so, uh, so although we don't really believe this idea that, that, the, that the, the, the green, the, this is a TEM image, by the way. You see this banded pattern here. Um, and, and you see, also see mineral on the outside. We don't really believe the, the model that, uh, that, 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 the, that the, uh, the, the, the protein takes shear, the mineral takes uh, compression anymore. Um, it, it's, uh, it, it is the same. So collagen and bone, uh, so tendon and bone have the exact same structure. Uh, it's, uh, they, they're, the they're, they're both built off of collagen. They, they differ at the larger length scales because the, the, there's, there's a matrix within tendon uh, and that's analogous to uh, the, the, matrix, the extracellular matrix we have in muscles that keeps various fascicles and various larger assemblies of, of, the, uh, of the protein separate. But they're, they're built on the exact same uh, backbone. And so, so, the, so, the, the, so, so the, for, the, for a mineral that makes it on, into the inside of fibrils in, in collagen, there's a, the, it, it just works its way into that exact same structure which shows up in, in, uh, in tendon. And, and, and then there, there's a, some beautiful work in the laboratory of Greg Goldberg here at WashU showing that, that, you know, that, that without mineral in, inside these gaps that, 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 and without tension on, on collagen, the, the, uh, the, the, these overlap regions where, where, the, where the mineral would fit would kind of buckle out and then allow these matrix metalloproteinases which come up to, to act. So, so, so reasons need to get up throughout your Zoom meetings during the day. Is that if, is that if you if you allow if you take all the load off of your your tendons, then your your body will go through the process will will, will digest the unloaded parts. It's a way that uh, you keep recycling unneeded tissue. So Shanju, thank you for raising that point. And and everybody, please do please do pretend we're actually in a room together. If we were in a room together, this would be much more of a discussion. So you could keep pretending that this is not sort of some crazed uh, global uh, world-ending pandemic. Uh, it would be, it would be, it would uh, make the discussion in chemical biology better. All right. So okay. now, unfortunately, uh, oh yes, I, please go on. Uh, yeah, uh, I want to follow up with this question: is that uh, uh, since that the tendon and the bone have the similar structure, so uh, maybe that is the reason why the in interface of the tendon and the bone is so tough, right? Yeah. So the uh, so uh, Shanju knows that I think Shanju is, is I think possibly trying to divert the discussion here. That, so tendon to bone attachment is where my group gets most of its funding. It's, uh, uh, your tax, you guys have given me a lot of taxpayer dollars. I'm thankful to all of you for it in that area. But yeah, absolutely, so, so it's, it's, it's really tough. But so our, our hypothesis actually, the, the, the dominant hypothesis right now is that the structure ends up getting messed up a little bit at the interface. There's a lack, a lack of order. And then there's a region over which the, uh, it's, it's very strange, but it looks like the, uh, the mineral on the outside of the fibrils, as far as we can, it's, it's this topic of debate, as far as we know, mineral on the outside of the fibril forms before mineral on the inside of the fibrils. So it, it, it doesn't, it, it, the, these plates somehow make their way in. Um, uh, it, it, and so what, what our current working hypothesis is, is that, the, is that there, there is this continuous fibrous network. It seems to actually uh, turn 90 degrees at the bone, uh, at the bone. Uh, so, so, that, so it, it, it turns not, not into, uh, not, not into a trabecular bone, but into cortical bone. And then th there's a region in which fibers are disorganized. And so when things are disorganized, 
you actually get toughness out of randomness. And then so mineral slides relative between fibers, the mineral crosslinks fibers apparently, along with a couple of proteins that people argue over. And, and, and then, and then the, there's the slide that actually absorbs toughness. Once you break it though, you end up with scar tissue, which we'll talk about in a moment, uh, that, that's, that's highly ineffective. But, uh, so, so, but, uh, but initially, the, the, the fact that it is the same network, just, just, uh, just with uh, interdigitated mineral, uh, is, is uh, uh, something that gives, that gives a healthy tendon to bone attachment uh, you know, really, really great resilience. But it does break down with age. I, so, so, uh, so, so, but, and, and, uh, and, and then the, 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 in bone actually, there are also a set of other cells that, that uh, maintain all of this. Anyway, I, I want to make two more points about, about, uh, oops, there it is, two, two quick points. And, and, uh, and you guys, and we got off track on one of my favorite topics. So we're a few minutes behind. I'm going to go a little bit uh, quickly through, through some of this, in fact, only at the big picture level. Uh, in fact, here I was going to point out that there are, there are a couple uh, there are a couple of major cross-linking um, moieties, and so, uh, or, or not moieties really, but uh, but mechanisms uh, in in these extracellular tissues. We're about to we're going to talk about elastin next. Elastin yeah. works in yeah. collagen. These are elastin yeah. fibers. I have a meeting that starts at noon, and I feel like um, oh. It so does. This one might run over a little. So oh, we're not going to run over patients. We're going right, right to end right on time, just to well, just um, to spite you. Um, the Wi-Fi is up. Anyway, um, well, you can't plug that. Yeah, so, so, the, um, so the uh, so the so so the these uh, these cross links here. Uh, so lysyl oxidase can can cross link collagen fibers, and and, they, they, and through a very well understood pathway, they can also cross link elastin, and we'll get to that in a moment. So the degree of lysyl oxidase determines how stiff something's going to be and how strong. And then there's also um, oops, there's also uh, transglutaminase. And so so transglutaminase can can uh, can uh, can, uh, can uh, link uh, certain portions of the collagen fibrils. That, that uh, and, and so um, the, these uh, the, these can these uh, get highly upregulated in diabetes uh, and, uh, and can, can, can really stiffen extracellular matrix tissues, reduce their toughness, reduce the ability of nutrients to go through. And, it's, uh, and they, they, uh, this can also be used to glue lots of, diff lots of the different uh, molecules, especially collagen and fibronectin and DCM together. All right, a few words on mechanics, which we're going to go through kind of quickly, uh, uh, but I'd be delighted to sit down with anybody and go through in more detail later. So, so the uh, the the uh, so collagen is generally is generally uh, uh, it's a strain stiffening, and it's and it's and it's uh, so meaning that the, the more you pull it, the stiffer it gets, and it's energy absorbing. Uh, and it, this, so this particular type of strain stiffening um, are, are very interesting. The, the 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 more you pull it, the more the, the more you stretch it, but also the more you the, the more you pull it, the more you stiffen it. And it also enables there to be all kinds of, of uh, a very interesting effects that show up uh, in collagen. So, so if you look at cells inside extracellular matrix, they're able to, this is, this is, uh, this is from Delaram Shakiba from a recent ACS nano paper. Um, on, the, on the right, on, and then on the left, this is work from West Legant and Chris Chen. The, uh, so the, this, this ability of the collagen to, to, be, to be aligned and stiffen as it's pulled on enables extremely long distance communication through, uh, through the extracellular matrix. And, the, uh, and, and this leads to a series of interesting effects that have been very well modeled by the group of Vivek Shinoy. And the leader in this area is, is, uh, for the Shinoy group is uh, Farid Ali Safai, who, who has developed a whole series of, of models that, that, uh, that enable us to understand the feedback between uh, between the positive alignment and, and the way a cell and, and uh, what a cell feels and then what a cell does. So there's a beautiful intricate feedback between these. I'm going to glance through some of this, except to say to, to say uh, two things. Number one is that is that as you pull on collagen or any network material, 
you switch from having the, this sort of uh, random network to having a network in which only a few different uh, networks go from one end of what you're pulling on to the other end of what you're pulling on. So there's formation of a dominant network. These dominant networks break and then offload stress to other, uh, other, uh, other networks. The network changes as, as collagen breaks. And that gives you lots of toughness because if you spread out all the strength of all the things in a network over, over a large strain, so only one at a time is breaking, you end up reducing strength but increasing toughness. That's a, and, and then, oh, I'm using a new version of PowerPoint and my equations aren't working. Sorry about this. Um, and, and then the, and, and so the, this is key to long range uh, uh, trend, uh, a strain transmission. And, and so and just, I, I have several slides of this, and we're, we're going to show this one. The idea is that um, if you account for the way that this dominant network forms, you need, you need, to, uh, account, you, you need to account for this, this to, to be able to uh, understand how far it is that a cell is able to reach out to its neighbors. And so if you look at either, uh, either just the nonlinear equivalent of, of F equals KX of uh, Hooke's law, or, 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 or just, or just a linear version of it, you get these, these very sharp drops with respect to position of the displacement field. But we see, we see from, from these data on, on fibroblast remodeling collagen, they're able to, to reach out many times the, the size of the cell. Uh, and and, and, and there the are models now that, that, that help us understand that these are due to, that these effects are due to um, uh, the, the, this ability of the fibers to realign and change networks with stretch. I'm going to have to unfortunately skip through lots of this great stuff here um, uh, to stay on track. I want to point out that, that these cells, that, that uh, collagen is very much viscoelastic. Uh, so if you stretch it and hold it, uh, the force varies with the function of time. And the way it functions, it varies as a function of time. This is some experiments we did in which we took individual collagen fibrils. So this is 500 nanometers, so you can see how, so you can't even see the specimen in this, in this MEMS device. Um, it, it turns out they, they, they are able to absorb energy uh, repeatedly with every loading. So individual collagen fibrils are also, um, are, 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 have energy absorption that varies with time. All right. and uh, and. Uh, I won't go into this in detail. It's a beautiful slide from Dalaram Shakiba. Um, uh, but uh, everywhere in the body, the, the, almost every organ in the body, including your muscles and including brain, uh, the, there's, uh, there's, there's, uh, there, are, uh, there are pathologies in which there's too much or not enough cross-linking of, of collagen. So, fi fibrosis, so fibrosis happens throughout the body. It's devastating. And it's actually what all of us on this call at present can expect to die from if, if, if something doesn't, uh, unless something horrible like cancer or a car wreck uh, happens to us. But it's the most likely cause of death for all of us. Anyway, um, moving on next though. So uh, it, it, elastin. Elastin provides, uh, elastin provides uh, resistance at high, at high strains that also enables uh, it's, it's also an elastic protein. It's not much physical elasticity in elastin, and it, it's, uh, it, it's so it stretches out, and then it, um, it it comes back much more rapidly than collagen. So it provides a restoring force, but only for extreme loadings. So for for lower loadings, collagen takes takes load. Uh, for higher loadings, uh, elastin takes the load. This is what elastin looks like uh, in a tendon. So so the the dark purple bits are cells. The the light purple bits are collagen. And then these long buckled elastin fibers, these springs, uh, this, 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 is, this enables them to, to have very low resistance at, at low strains. But then when you stretch out, when you flatten them out, they provide high resistance. And so there's, there's this transition uh, with stretch. Um, a, a note of caution, all of the, uh, pretty much all the models you look at for, for collagen, uh, for collagenous tissues that, that include elastin, they say that the, that the elastin is totally in parallel with the collagen, uh, which you can see isn't true because these, are, these fibers uh, are discontinuous, and the older you get, the more they break. So the, uh, I view the majority of elastin models as being fundamentally flawed. It's, a, it's, an, it's an important area, I think, for, for future inquiry. Uh, the, you know, it's, it's a scenario where, where there's a lot of good, really fundamental work uh, left to be done. 
I'm going to go through the rest of these more quickly. Uh, so th these, uh, th there, are, there are two classes of these, uh, of these uh, glycoproteins. These are adhesive glycoproteins. So these are, th these are the linkers. Some of the most important ones are, are laminins, which show up in these basement membranes and are, what are, are kind of a glue between a, a cell and a substratum. And and uh, and they and then also there's uh, these uh, uh, tennisins, which are which which are 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 both are, are uh, which uh, enable the the organization of other uh, other exercise purposes, having these bold sticky spots along their length. So so the key key, key things to remember here: these are highly charged. They have uh, highly charged molecules. They, they show up in basement membranes and in just in interstitium, and they and they their 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 goal is just to stick stuff together. So fibronectin is the first of these. Uh, th this is this is uh, critical to uh, this is this is uh, critical to a uh, to a, a whole range of, of phenomena uh, in the body. Uh, so the these these. So these are often found right on the outside of, of a cell, and you can see, for example, here's an example of of, uh, of a, a, a fibronectin dimer connecting through the cell membrane to the cytoskeleton and enabling di direct connection to extracellular matrix proteins. So fibronectin shows up on the periphery of the cell, and it's critical to uh, to linking uh, linking extracellular matrix proteins uh, together. So it, uh, it, no, there, there, are, there, there are two forms of it. Uh, so, so one, one uh, is, is, is plasma-based. So it shows up in the, it shows up, uh, it, it comes out of the liver and goes through your, your circulatory system. And then there's a cellular version, which, is, which doesn't, uh, which doesn't get washed away. And, it's, and it, connects to, it connects to the outside of the cells. You've heard about integrins. And they, they form these, these arrays uh, at, at, right in the periphery of most cells in solid tissues. So then these go these go far enough out into the matrix to to hit elastin as well. All right, so fibronectin again, it's a is 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 very much uh, very much so is a very very much linear. It's uh, it, it stiffens the more you stretch it, but it, it uh, but it, each, because they're, they're all they're all bound up and they're all these domains that can pop apart. It can, uh, it, it can, you can stretch a huge amount. So, so they're great linker proteins. You can stretch them eight times uh, the eight times their, their size, uh, uh, eight times their initial length. Can, can you imagine that? So, so they'd be like being able to jump up and, and touch the, the, the touch the the, the, the top of. Uh, oh, you guys can't you can touch the, you, you, So, if your whole body is made of fibronectin, you'd be able to touch the top of, of, a, of a six story building. Um, uh, by, by stretching out, so that, that, that's how crazy. Uh, that, that's how crazy uh, uh, the, the extensibility is. So it's a beautiful, extensible glue that that that's very hard to break. All right, next on the list, glyco uh, aminoglycans. So this is a picture from uh, a uh, from uh, I believe so Mike Cell. By oh, for, I'm sorry, you can't see this from uh, from. Uh, a, this is a famous picture from a uh, from Mike's so from from a from a, uh, a, a uh, from the textbook by uh, unfortunately I don't have the right there it is for example I, this isn't the right reference for it so off, often we see this really sparse environment these glycos amino glycans sitting on the outside of this uh, out of a cell membrane and and sort of a really clear distinction between the cell membrane and the extracellular matrix but. You know, the, the, but if you look at these quick freeze deep etch images, these are invented. These are called Heusergrams, invented by John Heuser. Pretty much all of the uh, uh, all of the images of organelles that we've ever had, ever able to take before uh, the year about 2010, have come from this approach, where you quick we, we freeze, uh, you, you rapidly freeze a tissue in liquid helium, smash it with a hammer. Etch away, etch away the, the tissue for a moment because their differential etching rates, depending on what the materials are and how stressed they are, and then then it's coated, it's coated with palladium, and then that and then then you wash away all the rest of the tissue, put the palladium in a TEM, and, this, and then see what you see. 
And so you can, so here's Collins and extracellular matrix. And here, and, uh, and you can see how, how densely packed and, and cross-linked collagen is. And, you, and, you know, and just for, these are some of my favorite pictures. These are, these are class, this is some clathrin-mediated endocytosis going on. So it, uh, endocytosis being how you pull stuff in from the outside of the cell to the inside of the cell. And, and, then, and then here though, here is the cell membrane. So can anybody here see the cell membrane? Can, anybody, anybody want to, uh, so you can all use the, the, uh, the, the, uh, the, the tools for annotation and, and try to try to try to draw where the cell membrane is. Anyone, anyone want to try to hear? Any guesses? I do have eight minutes. It's kind of sandwich. This is Fabiola from Penn. Is it kind of like sandwiched? Yeah, between those two straight lines. Yeah. Good for you. You are awesome, and you are invited back. Actually, this is the only lecture we're having. You're invited to the rest of boot camp. Nicely done. But I couldn't hear who that was. Fabiola from Penn. Hi, Fabiola. So th thank you so much. You're absolutely right. And so I, I don't have to erase it. Or, or here, I'll, I'll erase it. The, uh, nicely done. That is, that is the cell membrane. Uh, it, it's, oops. Let me see if I can get my slides to move. The cell membrane is, is actually this, this tiny region. You can see both, both layers of the, of the cell membrane. And so, so, but if you go back, you can see that this is, uh, that, that's clear you know, going across. And this, these pretty glycons, glycans on the outside, it is just as dense on the outside of the cell as it is on the inside of the cell. So beautiful picture is something that hasn't been explored uh, well, Paul Janmi and Rebecca Wells, two of our colleagues at CDMB, are, are, are people whose work in understanding the glycocalyx I respect very much. But, but th there's a glycocalyx here. It's extremely dense, and it, and it connects straight into the larger fibers. Um, so be, uh, and so the, the, these pieces on the outside, there are a whole bunch of, uh, of these, uh, of, uh, uh, there, there are a whole bunch of different uh, uh, molecules that do this. There are, uh, they 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 they, uh, they 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 uh they have a huge i said the most important thing here is i want to emphasize is that they have a huge negative charge and as a result they, 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 there's uh you know for for example these these are these are the molecules on the uh, on that, that are on the outside of, of most of most cells most epithelia and these are also the molecules have you guys seen that i should put a picture up here you guys have probably seen a million different versions of the uh, of the spike proteins on the outside of, uh, uh, on the outside of, of uh, SARS-CoV-2. So the, those, those are also uh, glycosaminoglycans. So those are also the stuff, that, that stuff pulled from glycocalyx. So in a healthy person, for you guys, um, the, for, for you guys, there, there's, there's this huge, there, there's this huge repulsive force that, that, that's, uh, that has to be overcome for there to be any binding between the, these, uh, these glycosaminoglycans and, and the ACE2 receptor. All right, and so so the in a, in, a, in a sick person the the glycocalyx can, can be uh, can, can be disrupted in an elderly person as well so so the elderly are much more susceptible to it but for for any of you guys you have to be sub, sub, subjected to a huge dose of uh, of the uh, a, 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 hu a huge flux of these particles to be able to for, for any of them have any hope of succeeding and then uh, in in, uh, in 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 small children who almost all have intact uh, glycocalyxes, there, there's, there's, there, 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 there are, uh, there's a, a group, there's a body of literature suggesting that uh, they, they, don't, uh, they, they don't transmit the, the, uh, the virus very well because it's hard for, hard for the virus to get out as well. Anyway, um, the, these, uh, so, so these, uh, these proteoglycans are proteins that have these uh, uh, glycosaminic glycans on them. They, they, uh, they show up on the outside of the, uh, uh, they, they penetrate the matrix and then, and then extend out. And, and, uh, and the, there, are, there are a series, uh, so, so th th there are a series of proteins that show up. So for example, uh, decorin is common in, in, uh, in musculoskeletal tissues and, and uh, they're very important in, in, uh, for, for, uh, for how materials take compression. They're also important in signaling. So, um, so in terms of mechanics, the, the negative charges are are are, are very uh, uh, are central to how they, they function. They they keep the they they can 
they can, can enable binding with, in high concentrations of calcium, and they can enable, and they, they uh, have repulsion uh, in low concentrations of, uh, uh, of, of cations. Uh, and, and so the, uh, and in fact, because we're so far behind, I will point out uh, that there's a, a, a there, there, there are a, 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 whole, uh, a whole range of these. Hyaluronin is, uh, is very common in cartilage, and, uh, and, and it is uh, it's central to the functioning uh, of, uh, of cartilage and compression. I want to move on to that very quickly uh, and, and point out, so, so we actually skip down to this because we're, we're, we're running low on time. So I have a few slides left, a, a few more topics I want, I want to cover. So we've, we've covered all of the major, uh, major classes of, uh, of, of, uh, of, of, of matrix. I want to point out that, that, that it's interactions between these different classes of matrix that determine how a tissue functions. And so with tendon it's, and with collagen, just by looking at the collagen mechanics and the cross-linking of that, we have beautiful models that have come out of the Shinoi lab uh, with Farid al safiya as a leader in that area. That uh, that 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 enable uh, oh, who's that working? That, that, that enable us to understand how uh, how those those tissues function. For tissues such as uh, cartilage, it's the interactions between these proteoglycans and 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 the and collagen and the cells that determine mechanics. So much so that so oh, this is a common picture. I don't need this picture. All of these that uh, various proteoglycans actually uh, link together and obstruct flow uh, uh, under low flow, flow rates. And as a result, the mechanics of cartilage, uh, models for mechanics of cartilage, I might be ending the talk here, but there it is. The uh, models of the mechanics of, of cartilage have two factors in them. So in, in the biomechanics community, it's called the biphasic model, but it, it's, uh, it, it's, uh, it's identical to older models of uh, uh, of poroelasticity for soils, the bio model. The, the idea is that the, the is that intention is, is, is still the collagen network that that uh, in say cartilage that, that gives you resistance. But in compression, the idea is that because these these highly charged molecules can be stuck together by divalent cations, because they can be because negatively charged pieces get stuck there. Uh, and to get stuck together when they're around divalent cations, there's water flow. And so the, the, uh, the, 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 water, the diffusion of water, the resistance to water flow uh, is, is, is what enables cartilage to be able to take a compressive force. So, so the, the reason you're able to jump up and down uh, as, soon as, as soon as I end in about a minute and a half, uh, is, uh, the reason you'll be able to jump for joy without hurting your knee is that, the, the, is that you squeeze a little bit of water out of your, out of your cartilage with each jump, and then when you release the load, it's energetically favorable for the water to get sucked back in. It's also why you're tallest in the morning, as opposed to um, uh, at the end of slumping over uh, 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 in the middle of a, of a long, endless talk. Anyway, um, so I, I'll, I'll skip through this, I, and only to say that the basement membrane as well has lots of interacting laminins and collagens, especially type 4 collagen. So if you look, uh, if you look in a basement membrane in the kidney, for example, you'll see you see these intricate networks of type four collagen uh, glued together with laminins connected to cells by integrins, and then and then this would be and then uh, and then the cell will be on top here. The, the, these integrins poke through the plasma membrane, so this is all uh, tied in to the the cytoskeleton. Uh, and uh, and 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 then and uh, the only the final point I want to make. Is that a collagen four uh, and, and, and cross-linking by less, less oxidase is what uh, provides the stiffness. All right. And anyway, with that, uh, if it, I'd be happy to engage in any discussion, but I'd also be happy to let you guys go off and have your lunch. Uh, so, so, uh, yeah. so, so uh, I think I stopped screen, screen sharing. That, that, that's an overview. The, the key takeaway points. So the, there's a there's there there's glue there there's glue and the, there's matrix that holds that glue together. Those determine what the what the matrix feels. The fibrous character of the matrix determines how cells are able to interact with each other. And then the 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 the, the, the 
in the very tight, uh, tightly uh, controlled space around the cell determines what a cell is able to hold on to and wants to hold on to a growth factor for some time later in development. The, the extracellular matrix is what enables that. Any, any topics for discussion or, or any questions or any, uh, any, any additional thoughts? And Hi, guy. Oh, oh, thanks. Uh, this is Chris from UCLA. Um, very cool talk. I, I'm actually interested in fibrosis as well. And I had a question if, while well, I was reading this paper that showed that a stiff 2D matrix is enough to induce fibroblasts to differentiate to myofibroblasts, which are these uh, secretory ECM depositing cells yeah. uh, responsible for fibrosis. I was wondering if you implanted a stiff matrix into a mouse, if that would be enough to induce fibrosis or seed fibrotic tissue formation? Yeah, that is a, that is a great question. And so, so th this is, uh, so I have three answers to this question. The answer is the same to every question that I've ever been asked, which, are that, which are absolutely, absolutely not, and it's the wrong question. So, so absolutely it does. So th there's, there's, a, there's, there's raging debate in the literature on, on that, uh, on, on what causes and propagates fibrosis. And so, in fact, Becky Wells is a great person to talk to about this, because the, the liver is a place where the, where the, the debate is, 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 is uh, very hot. So absolutely, it is the case that you can turn any, any fibroblast and most mesenchymal-derived cells into a myofibroblast just by putting it on tissue culture plastic in the lab. And, 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 uh, and, and, and there's, at present, no way that we know of to make it go back. So, so, the, so the, the, that's called the uh, fibroblast to myofibroblast tr transition. And, and absolutely, uh, around any stiff tissue that you put inside a human, you get fibroblasts. A, a, a great example is that, uh, say, a hip transplant. Uh, you, you, put, put in that, put, you, you put in tissue there, and you, get, uh, you, you end up with, uh, you, you end up with uh, fibrotic tissue. And then probably the, the probably the most common um, example, uh, it, it, probably the the second worst surgery in all of surgery is is uh, is hernia uh, repair. So in hernia repair, where you, you cut, you you, uh, you 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 where you cut, you end up with a, a you end up with uh, with soluble factors that uh, that 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 drive a fibroblast to myofibroblast transition. And in, in, in the latest paper I read on this, 94 out of 100, 94 out of 100 hernia repairs end up with an adhesion that causes discomfort to the patient due to the spreading of fibrosis. And, and then half of those surgeries, uh, half of those cases result in a revision surgery. So every, every gut surgeon doing, a, uh, do, doing a, a repair expects to see about half their patients back. For, for revision. It's crazy. So absolutely. But then there's, I've also was in a conversation re recently with a colleague uh, who, 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 then, who then cut me off and said, well, I'll have you know that the modern view of fibrosis is one in which soluble factors uh, dictate this biofibroblast to fibroblast this, uh, inversion. And this, and this uh, EMT, this uh, that, 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 that switches endothelial cells over to, uh, over to a contractile and proliferative phenotype. Totally soluble factors. And, and the reason for that is that, is that uh, reason, uh, my colleague's argument for this is that, well, uh, I, I can make this happen in the lab by, by, uh, by subjecting cells to soluble factors. So, so the, the, the SIF substratum is enough, I believe, there might be a soluble factor uh, uh, Component to it as well, but it's also the wrong question. The question is the, the, the questions are uh, you know, the, the, uh, the the questions are uh, is it uniquely one or the other? Probably not. It's probably some combination between the two. And also, can we reverse it? Uh, probably. We don't know how to yet. But if, if we could reverse fibrosis, that, 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 then uh, then all of us would die of something else. I see. So, Chris, Thank you. great question, and 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 that was a long way of saying. I don't know the answer, but, it's a, but there are lots of answers to it. Nobody knows the answers to these questions. Thank you. C can I ask one more question? Was that the other question? That makes, that makes two more questions. Uh, 
Oh, uh, I just had one yeah, more question. Can I ask a question? Here's the other question. Anyway, these guys are hungry. They don't think this is funny. This, so, so, so oh, yeah. he's going, Chris. Yes, Sorry. absolutely. Um, so if you have a myofibroblast that's secreting ECM, do you lose cell, cell contact because of the secretion of, of collagen? Would you push the other cells away? And so oh, that, is, that is a great question, a really great question. Uh, so what, what we observe is that, there, that we observe synthesis around the periphery of the cell, but the, the, so inside a myofibroblast, there are these, uh, there, there are these, uh, there, there's more there's pronounced stress fibers. So, so whereas a fiber, you, you know, we always see stress fibers as, as kind of a hallmark of a cell in the histology pictures we see. That's because biologists uh, have, have for, for, for over 100 years been culturing on, on, on glass. And on glass, uh, every cell turns into a fibroblast. There are only a couple parts, the point, a couple regions of the body where an actual fibroblast will form a, a visible stress fibers. So the stress fibers are, for the most part, an artifact of cell culture. And, they, and so they, these, though, so these stress fibers, though, once they form, then, then they, they, they form these really stable uh, integrating connections. And so, the, and so because they're myofibroblasts, they'll have a much stronger connection to the extracellular matrix. And so as they are, as they are synthesizing uh, excess collagen, they're, they're simultaneously uh, holding on to the extracellular matrix uh, around them. And then, then there's just some remodeling that, that goes on, they're putting out processes. So Delaram Shakiba from the ZEMB um, uh, has published a, published a paper, a, a beautiful paper at ACS Nano recently, which she, she shows the mechanisms by which this happened. So, it's, um, so, 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 so it's, yes, it's pushing away cells, but it's also compacting ECM more strongly and holding on uh, more strongly as that happens. Beautiful question. Okay, thank you so much. I'm preparing for an F31 proposal, so this is very helpful. Oh, outstanding. Well, all of CEMB would be happy to look over your F31 proposal as well. So, so, uh, so thank you. We'd, we'd like to look at it. Any other thoughts uh, before we return to the very first slide showing lunch? For those of you who eat fried tendon. Thanks, Guy, for the talk. Sorry, we are, sorry, you guys are 10 minutes late for lunch. But uh, th thank you all very much for, for joining in. I, uh, and again, thanks to all of you for the efforts you're making to, to, uh, to, to ensure that this actually is, is a meaningful experience. So th th thank you all very much. I'm looking forward to getting together and having some beef tendon with you guys. Uh, for, the, for those of you who, unlike here, are not vegetarians at, at some point in the near future. See you guys. Thank you very much. Thank you, guys. Yeah. And patience, thank you. Thank you.